All right, Steeler fans, it is Monday and it's Monday morning, and that means it's time for the Monday morning conversation right here on the Let's Ride podcast. Joining me is a friend of mine. I used to be a cohort with him at SB Nation, but still he he does podcast with Fans for Sports Network. That's Tim Lynch from the Mile High Report and Mile High Broncos Podcast Network. What's up, Tim? How's it going? Good. How are you, Jeff? I can't complain. It's been an exciting month for Pittsburgh Steelers fans, and one of the most exciting things was the acquisition of quarterback Russell Wilson. And that's why I had you on the podcast today to talk all about <laughs> Russell Wilson. Uh, you know, we've had people talk with those that are in Seattle, and I feel like Seattle fans have definitely a rosy impression and view of Russell Wilson. So I, I want to get this thing started with a timeline. Okay, so I, I want to go back in time. 2021, here is Russell Wilson's Seattle Seahawks stat line for the season. He had 64.8 completion percentage. He threw for 3,113 yards, 25 touchdowns, six interceptions for a 103.1 rating. Now, let's pause there. After that season is when he was traded from Seattle to Denver. When that happened, what was the overall narrative from the fan base in Denver when they acquire uh, Russell Wilson from the Seahawks? Uh, rebirth of Peyton Manning? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, the that's, no, that's fair. We're, we're after six years of just quarterback purgatory. It was like, we're back. You know, it's yeah. the whole feeling like we're back. We're going to be in the playoffs every year. This is great. Um, even I was overjoyed and uh, I drank all the Kool-Aid, you know? So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's where it was. There's no way else, no way, no other way to put it. Uh, Broncos fans, thought their problems were all over and gone and the future was bright. What did they think about the trade in and of itself with the compensation going to Seattle and stuff like that? Uh, I, I don't think anybody cared. I don't <laughs> think they cared when they, when he yeah. gave them a half a quarter billion dollar contract. I don't, nobody cared about anything. Uh, we all overlooked Nathaniel Hackett's goofy behavior and a lot of other red flags. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, we were riding high on that wave all okay. summer that year hey that's fair and it was a great year for russell wilson so then let's fast forward or let's move forward i should say to 2022 his first year in denver his stat line is as follows 60.5 completion percentage he did throw for 3524 yards but only 16 touchdowns to 11 interceptions and his career low 84.4 passer rating so my follow-up with 2022 is first what happened in that year, you said the red flags with Nathaniel Hackett. Was it all Nathaniel Hackett? What are your thoughts on that season? Because it was kind of an aberration in his career stat line. I 100% it was. I mean, we all blamed Nathaniel Hackett, but the amount of just basic head coaching organization and decision-making flow of the game, I mean, Hackett couldn't do any of it. It was literally the worst coach in Broncos history. And that includes Josh McDaniels, just to give you context. Wow. Um, he was fired, you know, mid season of his first year. Cause he was just so incompetent. You know, I don't, I don't hate the guy. I don't have bad feelings toward the guy, but as a head coach, he, he just didn't have the ability to run a football team. You know, he might be a great coordinator, but not, not a head coach material at all. Um, so a lot of us in, in, in Broncos country, kind of chalked Russell Wilson's first year up as, you know, this is just the whole season was a disaster because the head coach yeah. was such a bad pick. Uh, I can't believe George Payton survived, uh, frankly, um, when Sean Payton came, given that he hired this guy. But, um, you know, as far as Russell Wilson goes, heading into last season, we just I'm sure some started to turn against him, but if you really look at the season as a whole, I mean, it was just a train wreck and it started yeah. with the head coach and, you know, so we just, we moved on and said, okay, Peyton Manning has, or not Peyton Manning, Sean Payton has a, a record, 16 year record of running a franchise, a lot of success, had quarterbacks with success after Drew Brees. So it wasn't just all Drew Brees. Um, so we just kind of reset last year and said, okay, this is the year then that we're going to, really get to evaluate what Russell Wilson is. Okay. So let's go to 2023. And that season was actually statistically pretty good for Russell Wilson. He has 66.4 completion percentage. He throws for 3,070 yards, 26 touchdowns to only eight interceptions and a 98.0 passer rating. 
and he was benched in the final few games of the season. What happened in 2023? Was it all the Broncos? I, I believe it was the, they wanted him to waive the injury clause or something like that. Was it all based on that? Was it he versus Sean Payton? What happened last season that resulted in him being released? Because he had a statistically a pretty good year and actually resurrected the Broncos and had them in the mix midway through the season. What's your take on last season? I think I think this is this is the season where I really kind of re- understood that stats lie. Um, okay. You know, maybe that's something Seahawks fans uh, kind of figured out about Russell Wilson. Um, he's very careful with the football. Yeah, he throws the deep ball, but the issue is he takes sacks because he won't throw the ball in in areas of the field he's not comfortable throwing which is the okay. middle of the field you know places where you, it's an easy completion but it's not it might maybe it's due to his height i don't know but it was it was frustrating to watch even during the winning streak and, and frankly that winning streak was largely due to the defense just balling out and you know the broncos were winning really close games that frankly they should have scored 20 30 points given how many turnovers and and other things but they were winning by two points three points it was just fluky because of the 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 way the offense was playing and and if you really look at the film the the issue is just russell wilson just won't throw the ball in certain areas of the field and with sean payton's offense that's where his bread and butter is so this this relationship between um you know, Sean Payton and Russell Wilson was doomed from the start in hindsight. And the reason he was benched was because Sean Payton wanted somebody who would throw the freaking ball where he wanted him to throw it. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times Jerry Judy, you know, as, as much as Broncos fans bag on the guy for drops, he is open all the time. And the problem is he, he, he plays the part of the field that Russell Wilson won't throw. <laughs> yeah. So he's just wide open all the time and never gets the ball. So I don't blame him for being frustrated. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a quarterback that's willing to throw the ball in those areas field, he, he'll explode um, onto the scene, but you know, that's, he takes on necessary sacks. Uh, you know, what, what the Steelers are going to have to do is they're going to have to tailor their offense to his strengths and just do what Pete Carroll did run the ball and only throw the ball where Russell Wilson's comfortable, or he's going to take a ton of sacks and kill a lot of drives. I mean, if you look at the stack stats and the pressure rates, you know, that wasn't nearly all on the Broncos offensive line. Um, So that's where the frustrations came from, from fans and why I personally was fine with the benching, whatever the reason, Um because game after game of watching just missed opportunities just drove me mad because that they the broncos could have been a playoff team last year if if they had somebody who would have just thrown over the middle of the field um so that's i don't think they're a great football team well i I just sorry i just i don't think the broncos are are quote a playoff football team but the, with the way the defense played for that stretch they could have made the playoffs last year and that's just that's the disappointing part that's really eye-opening stuff, and and I've heard a lot of people that break down film. I'm not a film guy, but they, they talk about how Russell Wilson's just not willing to throw to certain areas of the field, especially over the middle. And that's <clears throat> excuse me, that's that's going to be a calling card of Arthur Smith's offense in Pittsburgh. He does like to utilize the middle of the field, and uh, you know when Ryan Tannehill had his greatest years with Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator in Tennessee, it was you plant the back foot and you fire that sucker over the middle. So it's going to be really interesting between the Justin Fields and Russell Wilson dynamic in Pittsburgh as it pertains to Russell Wilson's willingness or ability to do some of the things that Arthur Smith wants to do and and dictate from the offensive side of the ball. But let me go back a second, and I want to ask you, because again, when Russell Wilson was even in the mix, rumors were swirling. We heard from our sources that the Steelers were interested, mainly because the price was going to be so cheap for Russell Wilson. A lot of people said he's a headache in the locker room. He has a diva personality, Mr. Unlimited. We saw the Subway commercials. My question for you, that you cover the Broncos, so I you would know this more than I would. What's the difference between Russell Wilson, the player, and Russell Wilson, the teammate slash persona? You know, so is that factual or is that just national media jargon that they like to drum up all the time? I, I think it's more just the fans and the media that just, you know, make things bigger than they are. Um 
I'm sure there was some frustration in the locker room, but it was more probably, you know, the defense was frustrated with the offense, not frustrated with say Russell Wilson. Yeah. Um, I, I do know like the, the whole Nathaniel Hackett situation where he got his own personal office and he was just separated from the team. I don't know about that dynamic that that seems a little odd. Um, but you know, Sean Payton put an end to that and Russell Wilson, the player, the teammate, I'm pretty sure his teammates liked him and, you know, maybe didn't like the outcome of the games, but I don't, I, I think, I don't think it's toxic, I guess is the word that people use. I don't, I don't see any of that. I think that's more okay. of a fan media, you know, exaggeration. That's fair. Now, you did say uh, just a brief minute ago that you were okay with the benching at the end of last season and for obvious reasons. Did you foresee at that time his time in Denver is done? Or is this something that was kind of a surprise that Sean Payton didn't say, you know what, we have a lot of money invested in this guy. We don't want to just basically pay him not to play for the Denver Broncos. Uh, at the end of last season, did you foresee some of this, some of these things happening? Uh, absolutely. I, I'm surprised he didn't get benched sooner. Um, when you're watching every game, he was the reason the offense wasn't scoring. And it's it's like when they got in the red zone, he he was a strong reason why they scored, but he was also a reason why they didn't get to the red zone often. <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. Great it in the does. red zone. I like Russell Wilson inside the 20. He was making plays. Uh, it was exciting, but we they just didn't get there enough. And it was because he was taking, you know, sacks that he shouldn't take and missing wide open players. Just, you know, just didn't get enough momentum in games. And, you know, without the defense playing lights out for, for that five, six, seven game stretch, they, they would have won five, five games. It, it would, it would have been four or five game win season without the defense. And that's like, that was no better than, than Nathaniel Hackett's uh, run. Yeah. So, you know, that's, it's unfortunate. I, I do think <laughs> I watched a lot of Justin Fields last year. Coincidentally, it was, he, he led my fantasy team to a championship. So nice. You know, I, I have a feeling your fans are going to be calling for him to play a lot sooner uh, than you realize just because Wilson is frustratingly inconsistent um, and unless everything goes perfectly in the run game. I, I what I, that's I find that fascinating in and of itself. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I do want to ask you about <laughs> something you said about how the Steelers need to tailor their offense to Russell Wilson's strength, like what Pete Carroll did in Seattle, which was very successful. The guy did win a Super Bowl, get to two. Most would say he probably should have won two. But did Sean Payton not do that? Or was Sean Payton just basically saying, look, this is my offense. You need to execute it. And even, <clears throat> even though it might not have been to his strengths, do you think that that actually happened in Denver last year? I think it started that way uh, just because, you know, you go through training camp and all that. You're 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 teaching your quarterback your offense. But after their, their terrible start to the season, the – he adjusted rapidly. And I think during the winning streak, you saw that trim down offense. And it really was just based on if our run game's working and the big play, we're winning. But yeah. but when the run game isn't working and the big play isn't there, they're losing. You know, that's just that's the Seattle Seahawks for the last, you know, five years or whatever before before Russell Wilson left. So you know, I think he did what he could, but I don't think I think it's ultimately it's just like, all right, I'm, I want to see what Jarrett Stidham has. And they just moved on. And I don't, I don't think there was any chance Russell Wilson came back once that happened, whatever the media reported, what, you know, we, as a fan base, we were like, yeah, it's, he's chalked. We're moving on. Um, and that, that was that. So I think we were looking at college quarterbacks in December, just seeing, okay, who's out there. <laughs> Yeah, so so that brings up my next topic that I wanted to discuss with you. It's not specifically related to Russell Wilson, but the Pittsburgh Steelers and their fan base find themselves in a very unique, but unique maybe to Pittsburgh fans, especially the younger fan uh, situation. Some would call it, and it's a term you used earlier in this podcast, was quarterback purgatory. And the Steelers uh, are kind of the, sometimes you get the feeling that they, they're if, if you go back to Dante's Inferno, like he's they're entering that level of hell right now. And so I was looking it up and I was stunned. I looked up, OK, who have been the Denver Broncos quarterback since Peyton Manning retired? 
Uh, you know, you got Trevor Simeon, <laughs> Paxton Lynch, Trevor Simeon, Brock Osweiler, Paxton Lynch, Case Keenum, Joe Flacco, Drew Locke, Brandon Allen, Drew Locke, Jeff Driscoll, Brett Rippon, Philip Lindsay. I guess they label him as a quarterback. He started Teddy, one game. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke, Russell Wilson, Brett Rippon, Russell Wilson, Jared Stidham. I mean, that's like the epitome of quarterback purgatory. I want to get your thoughts on just in and of itself. How frustrating is it that the franchise cannot find their next quarterback? The Steelers fan base looking at, okay, they took a first round flyer at number 20 in 2022 with Kenny Pickett. He's now traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. They bring in Russell Wilson. You do not paint a pretty picture of Russell Wilson for the Steelers fan base. And they also bring in Justin Fields, which Again, there's a lot of inconsistencies there. In your experience, like what is going on in Denver and what's been the struggle? I think they just think they just thought they could get away with not and a lot of teams do this. They just think, oh, I'll just get up, pick up a quarterback here, quarterback there. But that's like 1990s mentality. That the league has changed the rules so much that if you don't have a franchise quarterback, you got nothing. Yeah. You know, you 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 really got nothing. Um so if I if I was running a team, I'm hitting that first round quarterback every year until I find one. I don't I don't even care about the roster at this point until you have a franchise quarterback. And I know people say, "Oh, you need a team for a quarterback to succeed." I'm, 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 yeah, I guess. I mean, we had a team, you know, a championship defense. Yeah, you still no playoffs since the Super Bowl. So no playoffs since Peyton Manning. You know, it's just I'm I'm come I'm the amount of quarterbacks we've gone through, I've, I've come to the point where I I'm hitting the effort button every year. I, I, you know, like the Arizona Cardinals, they draft Josh Rosen and then effort in the very next year, Kyle Murray, Murray, you know, you just a first round quarterback every year until you got one. That's just, <laughs> that's just what the NFL wants. So, but nobody's well, yeah. willing to do that. You know, that's just fantasy, but that's where my mentality is. And I just, I hope they, they trade up try to get maybe JJ McCarthy and just if he's if he doesn't work out go right back to the first round pick and get another one I just keep doing it until you find one well that was my question for you is I just looked it up because I didn't know where the the Broncos draft I see that you all have the 12th overall pick this year I believe but you have no second round pick and then you have a third a fourth two fifths and a sixth uh are you you so you're thinking they take quarterback in round one they have to like if, it, if they miss out, then I mean, if they miss out and they don't get JJ McCarthy, they're going to have to probably trade down and try to pick up one of the tier two quarterbacks. But at that point, I already know they're going to be looking for a quarterback next year or the year after, you know, it's just that statistically most of the great quarterbacks are top picks. You know, I'm, sh I'm yeah. sure you could name a guy, you know, Drew Brees was a second round pick, but how many other second round picks can you not name? you know, a lot. for quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah like yeah. 99% of them. So, you know, it is what it is. I think they need to just F them picks and move up and get, <laughs> get the guy, you know, and it makes sense because I mean, the, the Broncos, like, look at the names I rattled off that they, they so you've had since Peyton Manning. Now, yes, Peyton Manning was towards the back end of his career when he came to Denver and he was very successful, but they've tried getting other players from other realms, whether it's a Case Keenum, a Joe Flacco, uh, and it just hasn't worked out. I think that the Broncos are a really interesting case study with the, yeah, you can try to get a veteran that comes in and tries to resurrect the career. But or I guess the way when I'm talking this out with you, it sounds like you got to find one in the draft. <laughs> you got to build it. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I mean the the Peyton Mannings and the Tom Brady's come along what very rarely in free agency. Yeah. You're usually going for, you know, the the Russell Wilsons or the Kirk Cousins. You know, the the I mean they're not bad starters, but they're not like first ballot Hall of Famers. And right. those types of free agents almost never happen. So yeah, you gotta you gotta go find. Then I hate to say this because I hate the chiefs, but you got to go find the next Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> you know, or the Josh Allens, you got to go find a guy and yeah. then you could start building a team around him. You know, yeah. I mean, sure. You might suck for a year or two, but uh, maybe not look at the 49ers. You know, they traded all those picks for Trey Lance. He's a bust, but they find a guy in Brock Purdy that can, that can play and you build a team and you're in the super bowl. So 
you really have to find a quarterback and I'm sure seventh round pick. I mean, that's, they got a one in a million there. You know, you trade up for a bust like that. I mean, I don't know if Trey Lance is a bust or not, but so far he's not, he is right. Yeah. You're usually screwed for a few years, but somehow the 49ers beat all odds there. But for the most part, you got to trade up. You got to get a guy in the top, top 10 and, you know, hope he's got what it takes. All right, the last question for you before I let you go is if you as a Denver Broncos fan and someone who covered the team for the two years that Russell Wilson was there, you were, let's say you were penning a letter to Steeler fans and you're trying to prepare them for Russell Wilson's uh, entry to the roster coming up here with mini camp and OTAs on the horizon. What does that letter say to the Steelers fan base? Uh, I would say, you know, he's probably not as good as you hope. But the good news is, is your team and your roster is a heck of a lot better than the team he's coming from. And if they, you know, if, if they can tailor an offense to him and you have a strong running game, you know, you're, you're a playoff team. Uh, yeah. he, he's great in the red zone um, and, and careful with the football. He will take frustrating sacks. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a bridge and you're, you're looking for, you know, some competitive football and some playoff football, he, he could give that to you in Pittsburgh. Um, I, th- I think Denver had too many issues all over the roster and, you know, a really bad head coach for a year. It's it's hard to say this is the Russell Wilson you're getting because it's probably not. So I don't think it's as bad as Broncos fans might tell you, but it's probably not going to be as good as you hope. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. And I, I have to ask you, I got to follow it up because you talked about Justin Fields. You watched a lot of his play this past year you think that guy coming to a situation like pittsburgh could have a little a little uh motivation some some juice left in the tank and maybe be a guy for pittsburgh i think he's gonna i think he's your best shot even over russell wilson okay. and i'll tell you why both are inconsistent right yeah but justin fields gives you the running threat and when he, he gets into space he is dynamic and threatening and stresses the defense russell wilson is a runner he is going to dodge and weave and try to avoid a sack. And, and if he can't find a wide open guy, he's going to take the sack. Uh, Justin Fields going to get out there. If you don't see nobody, he's going. And that could be a 50-yard run because he's yeah. so good out, out in space. So I think that he did show a lot of ability to hit uh, tight ends. You know, that's one thing that, that Russell Wilson didn't really see a lot of tight end uh, throws. Um, but I only know that because I had, uh, Cole Komet on my fantasy team. So he, <laughs> he, he had a lot of big games with Justin Fields. So, yeah. Um, but you get an elite um, wide receiver, like a DJ Moore type that can stretch the field. Justin, Justin Fields is not a bad quarterback in that situation. Um, I certainly think he could give you more explosive and dynamic offense than Russell Wilson, but he'll, pro, but Russell Wilson will give you fewer turnovers and safer play. So it's, I guess it just depends on how good your yeah. running game is. If you, if you got a dominant running game, you know, Russell Wilson is going to be the guy that's going to take care of the football and get you in position. If, if you've got a strong rushing attack, uh, if you don't have that and you need to start stressing the defense, I mean, Justin Fields gives that to you uh, in a much better way than Russell Wilson will. The, the reports coming out of Pittsburgh that it's Russell Wilson's job and there's no competition have been, <clears throat> uh, I mean, it's it's way uh, unbelievably overrated. It, th- there's going to be a competition. Justin Fields is going to have every opportunity to potentially take that job in week one. We'll see how that pans out. But Tim, I want to give you an opportunity to plug the website, plug your podcast, anything that you want, social media channels, all that good stuff. Why don't you go and do that now? Yeah, just uh, Mile High Broncos uh, podcast. We're always looking for for new listeners over there. Um, you know, I, I also blog heavily on Mile High Report. And so if you're interested in Broncos stuff, you know, head over there. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for the Steelers organization. It's one of the OGs. So, um, you know, like you guys, you got a great fan base over there. Yeah, very diehard, just like uh, the Denver Broncos. And, and the, hey, they want to win. That's all they want to do. They don't really care who does yeah. it. They just want to win. It doesn't matter the name on the back of the jersey. They only care about the name on the front. So, uh, Tim, I do respect your opinion. I do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for stopping in. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Yeah, take care. All right, see you.